สวัสดีค่ะ Founded 68 years ago by Ingvar k o m p r a t in Sweden, the world's largest furniture retailer IKEA now has over 300 stores in about 38 countries around the world, and it is about to open a store in Thailand at the end of this year, the biggest in Southeast Asia. I talked to the franchise rights holder, Mr. Tom h u z e l and we discussed about his vision for IKEA stores in Thailand, and of course about competition with local retailers. Tom, why open an IKEA store in Thailand? Why not open in Thailand? IKEA is present in so many markets and should also be, of course, a part of uh, the Thai community. What potential do you see in the Thai market? Yeah, the same potential as we see everywhere else. Uh, people are in need of good furniture to, of good quality to low prices, and that is something that is common all over the world. And we have worked with IKEA in many, many countries, and it's successful basically everywhere we have been uh, active. And uh, we ourselves, Icono, are operating the IKEA concept in Singapore and Malaysia with huge success. And of course, we are quite sure that also the Thai customer will receive IKEA very positively. Is it pronounced IKEA or IKEA? Uh, in Sweden, it's pronounced IKEA, but since most part of the world, when they speak English, use I instead of E. So it's very common, especially in US and UK, they use IKEA. But here in uh, Asia, It's very often IKEA. So in Singapore, it's mainly IKEA. In Malaysia, IKEA. I think in Japan, I would also assume that it's IKEA. And basically, that is the right way. But both are equally right. Well, I'm lucky that I got it right. I yeah, always yeah. say IKEA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say yeah. IKEA. Yeah. Now, the IKEA store in Thailand would be the biggest in Southeast Asia. Is yes, that right? Yes. Yeah, that is what we believe. Yes. And now I think that every year somehow the stores are getting bigger. And now we are in, in line to open. So we are opening a big store. Uh, most probably, they will not last too long. There will be another store opening somehow sooner, I would assume, uh, that will be even bigger. But this is really a big IKEA store. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, will make people come to IKEA store? Basically, it is the range and the low prices uh, that is the main attraction power to IKEA. And the range is uh, well designed home furnishing products. Uh, of good quality to low prices, and since everyone has a home uh, to live in, uh, of course our product somehow has its place everywhere. So the customer potential is basically the whole population, since everyone more or less have a home. Who are your main targets? We are for the many people. Our vision is to create a better everyday life for the many people. And we do that by offering a wide range of home furnishing products, home furnishing products of good quality and design, and that is important. Good quality, not poor quality. Good quality and good design, to low prices, and that is a combination that is quite unique. You can find designer shops that offers good quality and good design to high prices, and you can find shops that offer bad quality to low prices. But to combine design, quality, quality function, and low prices is something that is. Uh, unique for IKEA, and that's where we are really differentiating ourselves from uh, from others, and that will be the main uh, attraction. But I think everyone is heading in that direction, though. Good design, um, approximate or reasonable prices. Yeah, but I think that you have different uh, business models, and the business model IKEA has chosen is to have full control of each and every step in the value chain. If you're a reseller of any furniture brand, let's say an Italian furniture producer mm -hmm. selling It Italian sofas, uh, a reseller here can only affect the retail price and the cost of selling it uh, uh, from the retail perspective. Whereas IKEA is involved in uh, designing the product, making the drawings, uh, design, deciding which raw material it should be used in. Deciding in which country should be produced, depending on which country has the right capabilities, uh, it's always knock downable, so it is going to be transported in flat package with less volume. Uh, choosing a less uh, heavy design, so it's not so raw material uh, intensive, so it's more sustainable. So if you have the chance to affect uh, the, the cost in each level of the value chain, at the end of the day, you will have a substantial saving, and that saving we are passing away to our customers. IKEA now has over 300 branches in yes, yeah. almost 40 countries. Yes, yes, yes. Now, has Swedish design become more or less a universal design? No, I would not say so. I mean, there is a kind of typical Swedish design which is based on more simple lines, more straightforward uh, appearance, 
rather than uh, a lot of curves and a lot of uh, unnecessary details. Uh, Swedish design is quite functional uh, and it's more modern. Uh, and that is uh, minimalist the, design. Yeah, not as much as in maybe Japan, uh, J- Japanese design, which is I would say more minimalist. But mm-hmm. there is a certain element to that too. Mm-hmm. But in IKEA you also have uh, more traditional design. I think it's only that the modern part stands out more and that's what IKEA is most known for. The most iconic products that comes from IKEA are more in the Scandinavian modern design. But there is also a more traditional, more country style uh, present in our range. And it seems to work on all markets. Uh, So we are pretty confident that it will also work here in Thailand. Do you think ties, you can make ties change their behaviors? Because when we buy um, big products like electrical appliances or furniture, we are more used to having them shipped or sent to our homes and not buy and then build it or fix it ourselves. Uh, this is a question that almost comes with every new market we come. Will the customers mm-hmm. on this market accept your uh, business model of doing things uh, on your own? And our learnings from all the countries that we are in is that yeah customers are prepared visitors and customers are prepared to do this if there is an upside to it and the upside is that you pay a less price for getting the same kind of product and that seems to be working in all economies independently on it's very uh, advanced like in the US uh, where you have really high income per per capita and it works in in Singapore and in Malaysia and in, in Japan But of course, for those customers who don't prefer to assemble, there is always an assemble service. It's up to each and every customer to decide for themselves. Do I want to do this job myself or do I want to hire somebody to do it? But we have also seen, and it's quite fascinating, that there is a pride. I mean, it's a kind of a craftsmanship uh, to buy your product and assemble it yourself. And when you're ready with it, the new sofa or the new bookshelf, you can say, I made it. And we can see that it's common uh, among people who also have the means to buy uh, the service of assembly if they want. Is this the Swedish way? I, I think there is no wonder why this concept comes from Sweden because uh, in Sweden we have high VAT, we have high uh, average, low, uh, the lowest salary is relatively high, uh, social wealth costs are high, which means that whatever you can do yourself to add value to a product, it pays off a lot. In certain countries where you don't have that situation, where you have access to low labor costs or low, low cost labor, uh, the incentive for doing this yourself is probably less. But since we are operating IKEA, or IKEA is, is present on markets with uh, high labor cost and with low labor cost, and it's successful on all kinds of markets, I don't think it differs. Mm-hmm. It, is, it, it will work here as well. Mm-hmm.